Igor, I guess when you look at the draw, you don't want to see another Grand Slam winner in the first round. So how does it feel to, to get through that one against Sonia? Well, for sure, yeah, it wasn't the easiest first round. Uh, she played really well, you know, and I tried to find my rhythm, especially in the first set, and I'm happy that at the end of the set I could win, you know, the most important points. And, yeah, as I said, it wasn't easy, and I'm happy that I'm through and I could play a little bit better in the second set. Good questions. You spoke in court about how important Ash Barty was a couple of years ago. You, you, can you touch on further how she motivated you to, to step up, you said, from that top 10 position to, towards the top bracket? Well, it was really annoying losing against her and playing against her because, as I said, you knew what she's going to play in terms of, you know, the tactics and the placement, but still she did it so well that there was nothing you can do, you know, and it, it really annoyed me and I wanted to get better. I wanted to be able to, you know... Um, be solid when she's playing her slices and um, and even though she wasn't the tallest one she served really well and the placement was amazing so I knew that you know uh, if I'm going to be working hard it, it could be you know possible for me so um, so yeah she really motivated me and um, I've never got to <laughs> got to win against Ash um, and she was like also off court I felt like um I don't know, she has distance to everything that was going on and um, and yeah, f well for sure she, she felt, you know, a lot of pressure and stress but um, she was always in, like in her own bubble and in the zone and I really respected that. We got Courtney, Courtney in front. Um, didn't like talk to you last year and she said that uh, you two shared a love of books and that you would often swap uh, tips on and that. Have you, have you caught up with her? Here and, and, and do you still have that exchange of ideas as to book clubs to read? Uh, that we would swap what? Uh, the book suggestions, like what you were me reading. Me and Ash? Yeah. Well, it was more than, I mean, I, I received a gift, a book from her uh, once, so, um, but I never really recommended her anything, so um, it was more, you know, one sided. Um, well, what was the question? Oh, do, do, you, do you catch up with her still? Do you have. Uh, um, not really. I mean, she has her own life and. Um, I don't even know if she wants to kind of um, still talk about tennis or with people from tennis. So, um, no, I mean, I we just, I think we had a couple of messages, like uh, I congratulated her for the baby, obviously, and, and that's all. I mean, yeah, um, she's kind of a private person, so, yeah. And me too, as well, so. Iga, uh, just what was the biggest challenge today? In today's match, and what were the keys to solving those 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 challenges? Well, um, well, she didn't play. You know, I mean, I felt, as I said, a little bit off in terms of the timing. You could see I played, you know, a couple of frames, and for sure the temperature was higher than any match I played this season. So, um, so I needed to adjust to that. The ball's a little bit flying out of control, and it's normal in these conditions. Um, so, yeah, well, at the beginning, I knew I could, I could do a little bit more in terms of, you know, the placement, and I wanted to be more aggressive. But on the other hand, yeah, I was backing down a little bit. So um, I just wanted to go, go forward and, and have, be proactive and have initiative. And um, for sure, in, when I started the second set, it was a little bit easier for me to do that. The, the uh, tournaments are allowing fans to move around more this year, it seems. Uh, first of all, I wanted to know if you knew that before you started playing. And then today, did you see it much and did it bother you? What did you think of it? Well, um, yeah, my, my psychologist told me today um, it's good that my team knows because they can get me ready for any situation. Um, well, I mean, I don't mind. I, I mean, up until... I mean, if the referee allows me to wait a little bit when they are, you know, going down the stairs, because you never know if they're going to turn right when your opponent is tossing the ball or or the other side. So um, so if the referee is going to let me wait a little bit and it's going to be fine, then I don't mind. So I guess it's up to the chair empire if, uh, if they allow, because... Yeah, I don't like to play when people are moving in the back, up, you know, behind my opponent. But you match today. I did, but um, but they were. I mean, they they sat quickly. Um, I mean, we waited a little bit, but I would say it was more than usually when we do the changeover. You know, we just had to repeat it 
a couple of more times um, when the number of games was even. Did you have a question? Oh, yeah. no, I actually had the same question, but I, instead I would just maybe um, ask you to, if you could elaborate a little from like the player's perspective, like if there's a lot of like movement in the arena where you're playing, um, there's a lot of movements, maybe a, a lot of sounds, how do you experience that as a player? What, I mean, what, what happens in the, with your focus, with, with your concentration in a situation like that? Well, I would say, I mean, some players, they don't care. I'm pretty sensitive, you know. Um, I can get my focus, you know, really zoned in, in the zone, but um, sometimes, yeah, I see the movement and um, it annoys me a little bit. So for me, it's better to wait and to see where these people are going to go because sometimes they are, you know, um, right behind the opponent, and yeah, I can see them, but I'm trying to stay focused. I mean, it's kind of my job to do that, so um, so it's fine. I mean, this is the audience. We're kind of playing for them, so um, they should, you know, uh, do whatever they want. But on the other hand, everybody knows the rules in tennis, um, so it, it would be nice if they would, you know, not move maybe right before the point. Um, but honestly, it depends on the stadium, because here uh, the court is in the sun. This, Audience is in the shadow, so it's really convenient. And there are stadiums where you know you're already in the shadow, but the audience is in the sun, and you can see that it's more visible. Sometimes there are stadiums where the sun is like, um, like the stadiums are I don't know from me um, something metallic, and it's um, it's like a mirror, you know. So the sun is pretty annoying. Here it's pretty fun. It's, it's fine. It's um, I don't see any problems. But honestly, I played on US Open, and I think the people are so loud, and they're moving a lot there. So if I could focus there, I think I can focus anywhere. Uh, just on Ash Barty, she you know, retired at the top of her game. She's still 27 years old. Do you think, would you like to see a return to the sport? And do you think she could have an impact if she does, you know, if she does take that option to return? Well, I would, I would love to see her back on court, but um, it's totally her decision. and. Um, I don't think we can impact her. Um, she, of, of course, she can impact a lot of people. She, she's a huge, huge inspiration, and obviously in Australia, she's a, um, you know, role model for for everybody probably. So, um, so yeah, of course. But I mean, I totally get why she stopped, and um, she's happy now. So let her be happy. <laughs> It was announced earlier today that Rafael Nadal is going to be a, um, an ambassador for the Saudi Tennis Federation. Um, given the nation's track record on human rights, especially with women, um, does that, how does that sit with you? Is that, are you comfortable with that? Well, honestly, I, I didn't know that this is the case. Um, well, for sure, I feel like um, it's hard to, you know, it's not black and white, everything that's going on um, in, in the sport. And um, it's hard for me to, you know, sum up in like one sentence um, if, I don't know. I mean, there were a lot of rumors about WTA finals going to Saudi and we're still waiting for the decision. It was always hard for me to say, um, you know, if it's, if it's good or not, um, because it's not easy for women in these areas, but obviously, these countries also want to change and improve. So politically and sociologically, it's not easy to just, you know, decide. Also, you know, in terms of many events that um, that were held and there were, you know, rumors about sports washing, I think it should be up to, you know, in my case, because I have nothing to do, you know, with Rafa and his decisions, um, it should be up to you know the federations and the governing bodies who decide if we're going to play there or not, and if there will be you know some negative backlash, they should take the responsibility. Because um, I'm kind of you know for me it's hard to straightforwardly just go one way and say anything. So um, I didn't even know about Rafa's decision, but obviously men's sport um, is already there in Saudi, so. I don't know if it's a good decision or not. I'm kind of, you know, trying not to be too upfront. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah, just, uh, it looks like Danielle uh, won the match with Kerber, so she'll be your, your second round opponent. Um, 
you guys obviously played semis here in the past. What do you make of, of that matchup and coming again so early, playing one of these matches that kind of you have a little bit of history with? Well, for sure, you know, I can't say that I have easy draw here. Uh, so, um, you know, I'll try to do my best. Um, Daniel is a really good player. Um, we played really tight matches. On the other hand, we, we also, our last match was, you know, pretty, um, I mean, this, from the score, I had it under control. So, so we'll see. Every, every match is different. So I'm not going to, you know, anticipate anything. I'm just going to be ready and we'll see. You're obviously one of the best returners in the world, and I think a lot of people enjoyed seeing you go up against the, the male servers at the United Cup. I'm curious, did you like enjoy the challenge of, of seeing how you fared against them and, and what, you, if anything, you changed to kind of tackle them? Um, honestly, I didn't have to you know, practice a lot this serve because I'm practicing against guys at home, so I'm used to you know, men serving, to me, maybe not that speed because obviously I, on United Cup there were, you know, top ATP players, uh, but yeah, it was really fun and um, a challenge, but I felt like, you know, I can just play without any expectations and I kind of guessed sometimes the direction that is going to go because I couldn't, you know, wait and see from their movement. It, it would be too quick, you know, for me to get it, but um, yeah, it was great. And especially when it worked, I just could see that <laughs> they were so annoyed sometimes. Um, I'm sorry, but I really had fun. <laughs> Like also in the like the baseline exchanges, you hit a few like nice winners against like Zverev. Well, did, you, did you enjoy that? Thanks. I mean, honestly, um, if they would start start like moving me around, it would be much on like single court. Um, it would be much much harder. I remember when I played um, this like ten minute practice like, with Rafa on Roland Garros, and when he played through the middle, it was fine. But then he played like one meter to my side, and I was already you know <laughs> late for everything. So. Um, so on mixed doubles, it's a little bit easier, yeah. Hey, well, a couple in English here on this one. Um, you said you've got a tough draw. How far through have you looked? Um, I mean, I only know that I'm going to play Danielle. So with the first round against Sofia, I think it's already a tough draw. Um, Iga, um, interested in your sorry over here. Um, interested in your uh, perspective on an issue in the men's side. Um, it was confirmed overnight that Alexander Zverev will face a trial in Germany over um, domestic violence charges. We know he denies that, but is it appropriate that he continues to serve on the players' council while that happens, or indeed continues to play until that is resolved? Well, any answer that I give will, I mean, there's no, there's no good answer to that. Um, I think it's up to ATP what they decide. Um, for sure, it's not good when a player who's facing charges like that is kind of being, you know, promoted. Uh, but I don't know what the result of the investigation or the case is going to be. Um, so... And I, I also, I'm not sure what's the history in terms of the other cases that he had. I don't know if he won or lost. Lost. Um, so I guess you have to ask ATP what they want to do with that, because I'm not in the right position to judge. Okay. Thank you. Probably Thank you. Not.